This is the second of my videos critiquing Mike Winger's video, The Hidden Unchristian Belief of Top Progressive Christian Influencers. At the end of the last video, we considered how he made incorrect and, and just completely tendentious and misguided assertions about Richard Rohr being non-Christian. I think that that was evidence of Mike Winger's sort of maybe poor theological understanding and lack of charity and dialoguing with others. And at this point, we want to jump in uh, immediately right after that. So he goes on and he says, well, there are some progressive Christians who have a, a more orthodox Christology understanding of Christ, the personal work of Christ. And there are other um, progressive Christians who do not have, who have like a heretical view of Christ. And so we'll just consider that. Others, however, think Jesus is in the progressive Christian movement. Jesus is just a good teacher. He's just a good spiritual teacher, though his actual teachings are very selectively used. They very much love the Sermon on the Mount until it gets to the part where Jesus is like, you know, not one jot or tittle of the law. Like, let's ignore that part. But the love stuff, for the blessed, oh, I love, man, those, those blesseds are really good. So the very selective use of Jesus. Jesus is highly edited to fit certain purposes. This is dishonoring to Christ ultimately. If you're going to say you're a follower of Jesus, you've got to take all of his words and not just some of them. Or else it's just Jesus following you. Okay, so the critique here is that progressive Christians selectively read, interpret, appropriate the teachings of Jesus. And then um, Mr. Winger makes these sort of sarcastic comments about how progressive Christians really like to focus on the Beatitudes and matters of social justice, but they don't take other aspects of Jesus. And he makes reference to how Jesus came to fulfill the law as allegedly being one of those instances. Well, I mean, two things here, at least. The first thing is, of course, from the perspective of various progressive Christians, whoever they may be, they would not see things like that. Just because Mike Winger thinks that, well, you're ignoring that, doesn't automatically follow that the person is ignoring it. It could be the person is interpreting the life and teachings of Jesus in a way that Mike Winger doesn't like, but interpreting it in a way that Mike Winger doesn't like isn't the same thing as ignoring it. So it would be nice if there was like a little bit more charity um, in his critical interaction with progressive Christians. A second thing to point out here is that, I mean, Mike Winger is correct that there is a danger that people will will get out of Jesus their own reflection. And as he puts it, you know, that it's not you following Jesus, it's Jesus following you. I mean, this was famously described by Albert Schweitzer at the end of his book, The Quest of the Historical Jesus, 1906, where he describes 19th century life of Jesus studies, attempts to get back to the historical Jesus. And he says, all of these scholars, when they give their account of who Jesus is, it's like a person looking down a very deep well. And at the bottom of the well, you find a reflection looking back at you. And you say, that's the historical Jesus. And you reconstruct that. But in fact, it's just you in your own image. You've created Jesus in your own image. This is a perennial problem. It's not a problem just to progressive Christians. It was a problem of 19th century Jesus studies. And it was it is a problem of evangelical Christians. I mean, you see here, Mike Weir make these kind of sarcastic comments about how the Beatitudes are valued by progressive Christians. But you know what that tells you is by and large, evangelical Christians don't have a very good focus on the Beatitudes or the social implications of the gospel and the kingdom of God breaking into the world, including the way that Jesus describes the values of the kingdom in Matthew 5 as he begins the Sermon on the Mount. So if progressive Christians are in danger of creating Jesus in their image, so are evangelical Christians. And rather than point the finger at the log you know, or at least the speck in your neighbor's eye, you might do better to look at the log in your own eye. Specifically in this case, I think Mr. Winger would do well when he's speaking to an evangelical audience, not just to criticize progressive Christians, but also to say, you know what? Progressive Christians do have a really important insight on stressing the social implications of the gospel as captured in the Beatitudes, which is something that evangelicals have often overlooked as we've turned salvation into uh, life, uh, fire insurance, something in the sky, pie, uh, pie in the sky by and by, as the saying goes, rather than recognizing the gospel is something that breaks into the present and should overturn and reform unjust social structures in our current and present moment. Okay, after that, immediately, uh, Mr. Winger 
goes on and says, well, well, some progressives are more orthodox, but then he goes on and points out that they don't really like penal substitutionary atonement. So we'll just watch that. Others, however, and this surprises some people, in the progressive Christian movement, there are some who are incredibly orthodox in their beliefs about Jesus. He is God in the flesh. He lived a perfect, sinless life. He died on the cross for my sins-ish. They'll define that very carefully so that it will not include any sort of penalty or, or substitutionary atonement, that kind of thing. Okay. So here, again, this is something common. It's, it's common in, in Alyssa Childers as well. And in so many of these conservative critics of progressive Christianity is they have conflated the atonement simplicator, the doctrine of Christ's incarnation, his death, atoning death and resurrection, and they've collapsed that into a particular theory of atonement, namely the penal substitutionary theory. So that if you reject the penal substitutionary theory of atonement, well, then you've rejected the atonement. And so uh, Mr. Winger here, he's criticizing progressive Christians who don't accept penal substitutionary atonement, which is one specific theory that was popularized by John Calvin and has been beloved of many, if not most Protestants, so certainly in, in the modern era. But there have always been a, a multiplicity of theories of atonement, which is a point I make in Progressive Christians Love Jesus Too. There are I mean, dozens of theories of atonement, but even more importantly, the Christian church has never taught a particular theory of atonement. If, if you read through the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, which I think are the foundational creedal statements of core Christian doctrinal belief, there's no theory of atonement described there. Uh, these documents describe the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, but they don't require of Christian adherence any particular theory of atonement. And so um, what, what Mr. Uh, Winger is doing here is criticizing progressive Christians for not accepting his pet theory of atonement, which is, I think, not a cool thing to do. Immediately after this, um, Winger then criticizes progressive Christianity because pro progressive Christianity includes a diverse number of different beliefs about Jesus, some of which are more orthodox, some of which are more aberrant or even heretical. And he reasons from that fact to the conclusion that this is evidence that progressive Christianity is not really concerned with Jesus at its heart. Uh, and anyway, so, so we'll, we'll listen to that and then I'll again offer a critique. But they do have at least orthodox beliefs about who Jesus is. Now, how in, in the world can there be a movement that is cohesive, that includes totally blasphemous beliefs about Jesus and totally orthodox beliefs about Jesus? Here's the symptom, because progressive Christianity is not about Jesus. This blew me, blew me away as I'm studying and reading these things and I'm finally getting it. I'm going, I'm all about Jesus. I inherently think it's gonna be some way, let's focus on the Jesus issue. It's just not about Jesus. Okay, so. Here, what uh, Mr. Winger says is, well, progressive Christians don't all agree in their Christology. So this, we can conclude from this fact that this is not a cohesive movement and it's not about Jesus. You can apply that same reasoning to evangelical Christianity. So here's the bad news for Mr. Winger. But if you wanna look at people who are identified with the evangelical Christian movement, you can find people from on one end of the spectrum, something like a health and wealth gospel, prosperity gospel, Pentecostal theology, people like Kenneth Copeland, Joel Osteen, right, sort of prosperity light. Uh, and then you can find more orthodox, I would say, um, Armenian Christians, for example, people like um, Roger Olson. And then on a more conservative Calvinist side, you can find people like uh, John Piper, John MacArthur, also a cessationist. Uh, what you have here is a very diverse spectrum range of views on who Jesus is. And I would submit that some of the views of these people who are included within the evangelical Christian movement are actually heretical. For example, the views of Kenneth Copeland, I think, in key respects, should be considered heretical outside of the pale of Christian orthodoxy. From that, it follows then that if evangelical Christianity has a diversity of views in terms of Christology, just like progressive Christians do, and if 
that diversity is itself evidence that the movement, quote unquote, is not cohesive and does not care about Christ, then it follows that evangelical Christianity does not care about Christ. So this is a good example of what we call being hoist with your own petard. Now, this is an expression that a petard is, I think, from well, it's an, in, it's an ancient and old incendiary device, like a bomb. The idea is that you try to throw the bomb at somebody else, but if you are hoist with your own petard, it means the bomb blows up in your face. Uh, and so what you've tried to present as an objection to somebody else now turns back on you, kind of like throwing a boomerang and having it come back at you. And that's what happens here, that uh, Mr. Winger gives an, ex an objection to progressive Christianity arguing that they do not care about Christ because they have a diversity of views among progressive Christians. He concludes from that, that they don't care about Christology as a group. And again, you can then follow that reasoning through for evangelical Christianity. If evangelicals do not all agree on their Christology, then as a group, they do not care about Christology. In fact, you can do that for Christianity itself. If Christians generally do not all agree in their Christology, then it must follow that Christians as a group, the Christian religion does not care about Christology. This is terrible, terrible reasoning. Uh, and again, it's a good warning that if you're gonna raise objections to other groups, you better be careful that they don't boomerang back on you and you become hoist with your own petard, ouch. Okay, I'm gonna look at one more clip, um, which immediately again follows on. A winger now talks about LGBT issues, and he says progressive Christians are unified on LGBT issues, and he concludes from that that this is really what they care about. LGBT issues. They are way more unified on the topic of LGBTQ stuff than they are on Jesus, a hundred times over. It's way more important, it's way more central, and it's way more of a fighting issue. You believe Jesus rose, you believe he didn't, well, we can just hold hands and get along. You're LGBT affirming, you're not, get out. This okay, so, so here he said, well, what they really care about is LGBT issues, uh, not Christology. Again, he's hoist with his own petard here. Um, when, when you talk to evangelical Christianity, what are, they, what are evangelicals known for? And what do they all seem to be united on? How, how much do they talk about Jesus versus talking about gay marriage? trans washrooms or abortion. I would suggest that while you do have with evangelicals from Kenneth Copeland through to John MacArthur, an enormous diversity of views in terms of Christology, you've got an overwhelming uh, chorus of condemnation of gay marriage, of trans washrooms and of elective access to abortion. So uh, it would follow then that if the progressive Christians by Mike Winger's reasoning don't really care about Christology, they just care about LGBT issues. Well, it also seems that evangelicals don't really care about Christology that much. They care about being against gay marriage, being against trans washrooms, bathrooms, uh, and being against abortion. So once again, uh, I think Mr. Winger is hoist with his own petard. Now, the other thing he says here is that he then describes them as allegedly being intolerant. If you don't agree with them, get out. He, he describes them as acting. Okay, I would say two things here. The first thing is, I actually don't see that uh, among progressive Christians. What I see among progressive Christians is a diversity of, of responses and perspectives on the LGBT issue. Some are very dogmatic uh, and set in their convictions and very much in an affirming embrace. But there's... Um, they respond very differently to the multiplicity of different ways that conservative Christians can respond to the issue. For example, um, and, and so you have that same diversity among evangelicals. Let me give you an example. On the one hand, you have somebody like Jimmy Swaggart. About 20 years ago now, I, I remember, no, not 20 years ago, about 12 to 15 years ago, I believe, Jimmy Swaggart was preaching. Uh, he's a well-known Pentecostal preacher within the broader evangelical movement. And he made a comment while he was preaching, speaking of gay people, he said, if one of them looks at me that way, I'm going to kill him and tell God that he died. And then the whole congregation clapped and cheered. In that moment, Jimmy Swaggart says, uh, I, you know, if that gay man, if a gay man looks at me like he's attracted to me, I'll kill him. Now that is 
perfect example of what you would call homophobia. It's, it's, it's not only fear, it's hatred of gay people. And I'll tell you, there is a lot of fear and, and hatred of gay people within the evangelical Christian community. Whether you want to admit it or not, it is there. Now, being non-affirming, taking a traditional view, uh, uh, stance against gay marriage does not of itself make you homophobic, certainly not in my opinion. Uh, I think a great example is someone like, like Wesley Hill. Wesley Hill himself identifies as gay, but is celibate and believes he has been called to celibacy. He does not accept the ethics of gay marriage. He takes the tr traditional non-affirming view and he describes his, his, his own experience and journey in a really nicely written book called Washed and Waiting. There is a world of difference between the hatred and fear and paranoia of Jimmy Swaggart and the very thoughtful, nuanced perspective of Wesley Hill. And I have, in my experience, the vast majority of people who would identify with the progressive movement would have a very different response to Wesley Hill than they would have to Jimmy Swaggart. Um, so if the evangelical Christians, if you're nasty to progressive Christians, or if you're nasty to gay people, then yeah, they're going to return the favor by being more intolerant of you. But if you are more of a Wesley Hill than a Jimmy Swaggart, I think you can very much expect, for the most part, a very different response. And so when, when Mike uh, Winger says, no, there's just this one response from LGBT, or, or, or sorry, specifically from progressive Christians, if you don't agree with us on LGBT issues, then get out. I, it's just unfair and it's not true. You have a diversity of responses depending on your in, depending on how the evangelical Christian has stated their own views about about LGBT issues. And the last thing I'll say on this is, again, if you want to talk about people saying get out, I'll tell you that 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 response is a very common response in evangelical churches. I mean, how many pastors have lost their jobs because they've taken on an affirming view. They've said, you know what, I, I believe that that people can be, that, that God would bless gay marriages or something. You, you think those people are going to last very long in your typical conservative evangelical denomination? No way. So don't criticize progressive Christians who are intolerant of evangelicals when evangelicals are no less tolerant of the progressives. You can't hold them up to a standard or criticize them for not meeting a standard that you yourself are not meeting. So once again, uh, I, I just find there's a lot of problems with Mike Winger's analysis. And here's the bad news. I've only worked through about two minutes uh, in this second video of, of uh, Mike Winger's talk. And I, I'm not gonna be able to do these videos um, for, for the entire 56 minutes. It's pretty clear. Otherwise I'll be doing like 30 videos, I think. But what I do want to, to conclude, what I do want to achieve in, in the videos that I do produce, and I may do one or, or two more criticizing him, is simply to make a point. Let's say that you are looking to buy a car. And so you um, ask your friend to take a look at it and because he knows more about cars than you do. First thing he does is he holds up a magnet to the body. And he's, the first place he holds it up, it doesn't stick. And he says, you know what? That has been bondoed. In other words, uh, that was damaged, and then they restructured the fender, um, reconstructed it, and they put Bondo filler in, and then painted it to make it look like new. But it's 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 not it's not it, it's been damaged. And then he, he goes to another part of the car, and he finds that that part of the car also has Bondo. Now, do you have to go to every inch of the car and check the fenders and the, the doors and the hood and the trunk and everything in order to see if it's all been Bondoed? No, you don't. I mean, you do a few random checks and you know what? I, I think there's enough here that I don't think you should buy this car. It's not a reliable car. And if you're looking for a house um, and you think, yeah, should I buy this house? And you hire somebody to do a random check and they they look behind a couple walls and they find two walls are infested with term termites. Do you need to go through the whole house in order to see if the whole house is infected with termites? Or do you have enough to conclude that, no, this is probably not a good house um, and I think you would have enough to conclude it's not a good house. So uh, by the same token, um, in these few videos that I'm going to, I've made, this two that I'm going to make, I've made, and a couple more maybe that I'll make before I grow tired of talking about Mike Winger. What I want to do is, and what I am doing, is giving you a check and saying, hey, this is Bondo. Hey, this is termites. So that we don't have to watch the entire video to know that Mike Winger is simply not a reliable commentator 
when it comes to progressive Christianity. That is going to be my end goal. Uh, and I will, will stick with this for a couple more videos at least before I draw my final conclusions.